Sports Illustrated entire staff told they are getting laid off. Here we go, yet another company realising the pitfalls of adopting diversity, equity and inclusion. Oh, but that's not the reason they'll scream. There are other reasons. The future of Sports Illustrated looked dire Friday after the publisher of the diminished outlet announced mass layoffs because its licence to use the iconic brand's name in print and digital was revoked. The Arena Group, which had been roiled by reports that the fabled magazine published AI-generated content, admitted to the failing to make a $3.75 million quarterly licensing payment to Authentic Brands Group due this week. Now, this is the reason people will scream, that's why all the layoffs are happening, that's why the magazine is failing. They made up journalists. They published AI-generated content. Whereas anyone with a couple of brain cells to rub together and a pair of eyes knows what led to the downfall of Sports Illustrated because they went down the pathway of DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion. And when your company adopts DEI, your company will die. Here is the reason, one of the reasons, why Sports Illustrated is quickly going out of business. The Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. This was iconic. I'm pretty sure it came out every year. I'm casting my mind back now as a young teenage boy that I remember flipping through the TV guide and seeing that the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition, the making of specials were on. And I programmed my VCR to make sure that I could see it because all I wanted to see was hot, beautiful women. Yet for some reason... Well, I, I know the reason. The people at, at Sports Illustrated thought it was a good idea to put Kim Petrus on the cover, a trans woman, and the likes of this person. Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad person, but I remember watching those Sports Illustrated, the making of, and seeing some of the most beautiful, perfect women that you could possibly imagine. So they decided to adopt this and they wonder why men suddenly went, yeah, you know what? I'm not interested. I'm not going to have my favourite magazine try to tell me that I should be attracted to cock and balls. It ain't going to happen or whatever the hell this Kim Petrus has done to himself. Now, Sports Illustrated isn't the only one who uh, effed around and found out when it comes to DEI. Uh, we all know Bud Light and what they did. There won't be any beer come March. US Anheuser-Busch workers threatened to strike. Workers who make Bud Light and other top-selling beers are threatening to strike in demand of significant wage increases, job security improvements to retirement and benefits in the first big union contract battle. Well, here's the thing at the moment. Bud Light is losing a whole heap of money. They're not making any money either uh, because some really smart genius at Anheuser-Busch decided that, you know, the target audience that buys our beer, here's a great idea. Let's tell that target audience to go f*** themselves. Now, Bud Light's also not the only one. Cast your mind back now just a couple of years where Victoria's Secret, you know, the women's lingerie brand, said, uh, we're moving from the angels to activists. Because, yes, that is exactly what men who watch the Victoria's Secret fashion show are interested in. Not the ridiculously beautiful women who they look at and then fantasise about their girlfriend or wife and think, I'm going to buy them that outfit because... God, that will make them look so sexy. All the women who look at those angels and models who are damn near perfect, no matter what they look like, they sit there and they look at it and they think to themselves, I want that because I want to look that sexy as well. So here's what they went from. Uh, I don't know who this model is. Shame on me, I guess. So they went from that thinking, nah, we don't want that. F that. Hell, this is what we want. Megan Rapinoe, odious misandrist, who basically just screams that she deserves everything. Now, this might be attractive to a couple of women, 
There might even be a couple of guys out there. But what percentage of the market of Victoria's Secret that they're targeting do you think is attracted to a Misandrus who just bangs on about how she deserves it all? But hang on, things might be changing. The Victoria's Secret Fashion Show is coming back after a four-year hiatus. The Victoria's Secret has been under fire for past four years trying to repair its image after accusations of non-inclusivity and lack of body-positive models led the company to shut down its iconic group of supermodels called the Angels. So let me just translate that for you if you don't understand what that means. People who look like this, who are so ugly, basically on the outside as well as the inside, hated the fact that people like this was selling its brand. And for some strange reason, Victoria's Secret listened to the people like this, a tiny, 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 tiny percentage of their market base and thought, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's listen to you. But they're trying to turn things around. So instead of getting people who look like this, and she might be one of these people here, but just, you know, new younger models that look like this, Victoria's Secret now taps past angels for debut on new icon collections. So they, <laughs> they can't find anyone new, so they're trying to, they're doing a member berry here. Hey, member, um, who's that? Naomi Campbell and Giselle Bunchen. Uh, they, they used to look good in our gear. Remember them? Please buy our brands again. See, these things could be fixed so simply, just going back to the way things were going back to what used to work. See, Disney's going through this same thing as we speak. They took a brand that was universally loved by 50% of the population, more or less, and said to that 50% of the population, F*** you, we're going to completely destroy what you love and change it for 50% of the population that sort of almost universally stated that they, ha they cared nothing about Star Wars. What a, what a fantastic idea. Now, Australia is not immune to this. We are sort of seeing it more so coming to light right now with the Australia Day argument that is coming up with the likes of Coles. Uh, excuse me, with the likes of uh, Woolworths saying, we're not going to, yeah, we're not going to celebrate Australia Day because it's not inclusive enough. Now, the reality of the things are is that they're getting their marching orders from higher above the CEO. They're getting those marching orders from higher above the CEO and from sort of below the CEO as well uh, with the likes of the HR department. See, the marching orders from above the CEO are coming from the likes of, of BlackRock, who own a huge share in Woolworths and Vanguard and State Street. And they basically said, we will tell the companies we invest in in how to think. So what they do is they get their other plants in there via the HR department, who sit there and back up what they've been told by the likes of Vanguard, State Street and BlackRock and say, no, 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 you need to go down the pathway of diversity, equity and inclusion. That way, it really works. Now, the CEOs fail to realise is that they're listening to an awful, figure out that acronym, uh, acronym for yourself, who's been brainwashed by a communist Marxist professor and have got a whole bunch of fake studies to show that if you go down this path, your, your business will flourish. Yet we see time and time again that the exact opposite is true. Hell, that's where the, the phrase get woke, go broke comes from. So I implore, I implore any business owner right now who is sitting there thinking to themselves, my HR person is telling me that I need to go down the diversity, equity and inclusion mark. Uh, fire them. Fire them immediately if you want your brand to survive. It was interesting. I was listening to a, uh, a Tim Pool podcast just the other day and I think Dom Lucre was on. Follow him on X, by the way. And they were discussing more specifically Sports Illustrated to go back to where we started from and the likes of Bud Light. And they were saying... Hang on, but this isn't a good thing. These are American institutions, Sports Illustrated, Bud Light. 
that have been overtaken by this mind disease use their their institution as a skin suit and just utterly destroyed it. And they're saying that this is a bad thing. We shouldn't be celebrating it. Well, yes and no. But unfortunately, there's going to have to be a few sacrificial lambs in order for all the other businesses out there to sort of wake up and sit there and look and go, hang on, I don't want that to happen to my business. Now, on the wake of Bud Light looking like it's going to utterly fail, there are other beer brands out there. Uh, I can't remember the exact name of it. I think in America only, I'm talking here, Conservative Dad's Beer or something like that. That is the opportunity for that beer brand to take over the marketplace and flourish whilst not mentioning a word of diversity, equity and inclusion. Because once again, if you're a boss or if you're a CEO and you've got these HR departments, believe me, I know this from personal experience, who is sitting there telling you you've got to adopt these things, just boil it down to this one thing. You've got somebody in your ranks right now telling you it's great to discriminate against possible employees or current employees on the basis of race, sex, and sexuality. Do you really want that to be the legacy of your company? Mark Cuban's finding out the hard way about this and he still can't figure it out. Is that what you want for your business? You know what to do. Get rid of them. Like I said earlier on in this video, if your company applies DEI, your company will die. All right, mate, thanks very much for checking out the channel and this video. So follow me up there and do the things down there. Are we done? Yeah, we're done.